guys and welcome back to another video of ECK Sports and today I am back at it with another video and this time I'm going to be giving my MLW 2021 season predictions. It is that time of year, the MLW 2022 season. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Starting it off with the AL at number four, I am going with the Metro Magic. Now I'm kind of known to be a Metro Magic hater in the MLW community. I just feel like the batting lineup is pretty average. You have five kind of inconsistent guys, two guys that can be stars, but the three other guys, you know, pretty inconsistent, you know, batted under 200 last year. So we don't really know how they're going to do this year because I mean, they could be good. They could not be good, but the Magic last year, their highest batting average guy was 220. Which I believe is the lowest amongst every team. I do have them at six and nine. I do think that they're going to beat the Mallards. I believe that's going to be one of the first series of the year. And then I have them losing all their other series. I know I might get hate for them losing to the Cobras in the last series, but I just think this is the year where Drew Davis and the Cobras finally beat the Magic in that last series. I mean, the Wildcats and Preds usually beat them, and I just feel like the Eagles are better. So I'm very interested to see how the Magic pitching does. Trevor Bonham was fantastic at the beginning of the season and then started to fall off after he got traded from the Magic. So we'll see how he is. Jason Chadwick was also really inconsistent last season and he was great in 2020. So we'll see if he's the 2021 Chadwick or the 2020 Chadwick this season. But I have the Magic at six and nine. Coming in at number three, you've got the Coastal Cobras. Now, I actually think that the Cobras are a better all-around team than the Predators are. You might be saying, oh, ECK, if you think that the Cobras are better than the Predators, and why do you have the Cobras at third and the Predators? higher well I'll tell you why it's because of the way that their schedule works out I said on the discord that there were gonna be no sweeps this year I was kidding myself there is gonna be at least one sweep this year I can guarantee you that and teams that get swept are usually teams that have pitchers that aren't that great or like inconsistent pitchers and I really don't see that in the league right now other than the Cobras there's five really good pitching tandems those guys won't get swept Daniel Schultz and Jordan Robles probably gonna be two of the most clutch players in the league they ain't getting swept. Normal Dirty Dan does not get swept. Jordan Robles is a winner. He will never get swept once in his MLW career. I just want to say that right now. So that leaves the Cobras with kind of an inconsistent number two arm. And then Drew Davis, who sometimes can not do well in certain games. And for their schedule, obviously it's been on screen for a while now. I do have them getting swept by the Diamondbacks. The Preds series will be very close. I do think they will squeeze out a W against the Mallards. Like I said, they're going to beat the Magic in that last series. And then they're going to lose to the Wildcats. If Drew Davis can stay hot at the plate and the mound, the Cobras are going to be a scary team this season. With a great bat of Sean Flynn, who is pretty consistent. He hit 280 last season, and the last time we saw him, he hit three home runs. If he can continue being that player that can have both contact and power, Sean Flynn is going to also provide a great bat. When Andy Durant is there at the field, he is one of the best hitters in the league. He batted over 400 last year. I know the power Power wasn't 100% there, but when he is at the field, he is a difference maker. We don't really know how Baron and Sawyer Bean will impact the team, but they will be fighting for that number two arm job as the Cobras look to solidify that spot in 2022. Now, moving on to second place, you have the Pacific Predators at eight and seven. Now, once again, I have the Predators two games ahead of the Cobras, and in MLW terms, that's, that's a lot. But it's really the way that the schedule kind of went out for them. I think that their schedule is like kind of slightly easier since they don't really face the Diamondbacks and like I said they're kind of one of those teams that I don't really think can get is gonna get swept I do think that they're gonna lose to the Eagles and Wildcats both teams are better it's gonna be really fun seeing Dan and Crash pitch games one and three in the Wildcats series I think most of us would agree with me that they'll lose that series but I do think that they're gonna beat the Magic Cobras and the Gators so that puts the Preds at eight and seven which is second in the AL as long as Ryan Crash is the ace of the Pacific Predators they will always be competitive Competitive. I know at the end of the season, Crash wasn't at his best, but that's Crash at his worst, and Crash at his worst isn't really that bad. And Crash, you know he's consistent. You know he's going to go out there twice a series. Steven McGlade, on the other hand, was a fantastic number two arm, one of the best number two arms in the league last year, has a couple good pitches in his arsenal, and you'd figure would really only improve in his second year, though I do think that regression could happen. Brennan Russell is always a solid third or fourth bat, 
at for this team. We'll see how Mac Holly fits in. I really do not think that was a great draft pick, but I understand the pick. And Alec Warda, just coming off a big bounce back season, his best season since 2018. So that was really nice to see. We'll see if he can continue that production and which I obviously hope he does. And now at first place, it's the shirt I got on. No, I'm not a Wildcats fan, guys. First place is the Western Wildcats. This top three hitting duo is elite. I have them winning every single series two to one better than every other team on here except the Diamondbacks. And I have them beating the Diamondbacks because usually I feel like in World Series rematches, the team that loses ends up winning that World Series rematch. So I just have a feeling that the Wildcats are going to take that. This Wildcats team is just overpowered. You have Schultz, Sailor, Pearson. Kyle Schultz has been one of the best hitters in the league for 12 years now, basically. Nick Saylor right now is the best hitter in MLW, best duo in the league. And then you add on Pearson, who has a lot of talent, could easily break out this year and become a superstar. That leaves a potential for three superstar hitting options. And then you have Schultz and Saylor, who are probably a top three pitching duo probably number two behind Norp and Heath. I mean, this Wildcats team is unstoppable. Now to the NL. This is where the fun begins. Now, it was extremely hard for me. Pick a number fourth seed, but I went through all the series and stuff. And I know, you know no one's really saying the D-backs. I've heard of the Eagles. I've heard of the Mallards from a lot of people. And I've heard the Gators. So, the number fourth seed in the NL is, yes, you heard it right here. It is the Great Lakes Gators. I can't believe I am saying this. The champion from two years ago missing the playoffs how could that happen well i'll show you i have them losing every series one to two except i have them pulling off the impossible upset against the diamondbacks now you guys are calling me crazy right now in the comments probably you're like how in the hell are they going to beat the diamondbacks if you have them losing to all these other teams well i don't know there is going to be one or two major upsets this year i'm calling it right now the issue with the gators is really i don't know what i'm getting from cheetah and Jordan. Cheatham and Jorgensen were just really inconsistent last season. They were just so on and off, you know, especially Jorgensen giving up like a, a lot of home runs. And for some reason, people were saying that Jorgensen looked like 2020 Jorgie in spring training. I don't know where you're getting that from. He gave up two home runs, gave up a bunch of hits. I don't really know where that's coming from, but I could see Cheatham really solidifying himself as an ace this season. I mean, he was so good at the end of last season, so I could easily see that happening. Jorgensen, though, I have a lot of questions about. With the hitting lineup. We'll see what Reese Harris can do. I think he could step in and make a decent impact right away for this Gator squad. Zerlag, we don't really know if last season was kind of a one-year thing, but it could be. Maybe it's not. Cheatham, he's always going to be there for this team. He's always going to hit well. He's always going to pitch well. You don't have to worry about Cheatham. I have the Gators finishing at 6-9, and nine, finishing in fourth place. At third place, the winners of the MLW 2022 draft, you have the Midwest Mallards, finishing at 7 and eight. The big question I have to myself is, will Tommy be better now that he has another bat to rely on? And it's really not just him. That's my main question. I have them beating the Eagles and the Gators. I think Robles is that guy that just is going to hit Dan pretty well. And I think that they're just going to beat the Gators. I think Robles will be able to beat Cheatham and Jorgensen on the mound. And I think that they'll be able to hit off Jorgensen. I mean, I have them losing to the Cobras, Magic, and D-backs. I think the D-backs series that's going to be a really tight one i think the mallards will compete in every series every game this year the mallards should be interesting because you've got tommy who is coming off probably the worst season of his career but you'd only figure now that you had robles that that would take less pressure off him robles he's going to have an immediate impact on this team right away he's going to be one of the better hitters and pitchers he will be the mallards ace i think and we'll see if kate Irwin can take that big second year leap as well as brendan davenport i have said many times that I don't really know if Brendan Davenport is in the future plans of the Mallards. I really think that they're planning on having a lineup for now of Coughlin, Robles, and Irwin. Irwin starts off as the number two, which I don't really know how I feel about that. We'll see what happens with the Mallards. And then at number two, I am going with the Eastern Eagles. The Eagles are not really a flashy team. I have them going eight and seven. 
I think that they can beat the Preds and the Gators, as well as the Magic. I do have them losing to the Mallards and the D-backs. I think the Mallards will, will get the best of them. That the D-backs, that's going to be a very tight series, but Norp has a lot of success against that team, so I think that he will be able to win them that series. The Eagles are a very young squad with a lot of young talent. Now, Blade Walker has an injury, so I don't really know if he's going to play at all this season. They don't really need him too much because I really like their pick of Landon Urgaitis, who was one of my favorite players that was picked up in the draft, has a great arsenal, and was great in Bay City for hitting-wise, and he was facing some good pitches in Bay City. So if Robles somehow doesn't win Rookie of the Year, I think it would probably be Urgaitis or Reese Harris. Dan Schultz, I mean, it's Dan Schultz. He'll, he'll be there on the mound. You just know he is. At the plate, I don't know because he's kind of gotten worse like every season at the plate. Still, even then, he's still going to hit well. And I am projecting a big breakout season for Dallas Allen. He was good last year, but I think this year he really takes that leap from really good to star. So I can't wait to see how he does this season. And overall, I think the Eagles are going to be a very fun team to watch. And then now, at number one, you knew it was coming. It is the downtown Diamondbacks. Seven of them finishing at 9-6, and six, sweeping the Cobras, beating the Eagles and the Mallards. But I have them losing two series. The Wildcats, I think that they're very equal teams. And then the upset of the year will obviously be them against the Gators. So I have the D-backs finishing at 9-6. and six. I am very interested to see how the two draft picks of Casey Bennett and Trey Flood do. Both have, I think, some potential. And unfortunately, I don't really think Trey's going to get to pitch much this year. I do think that he is a good pitcher. But unfortunately, he's not really going to be able to pitch because you have the best ace and the best number two arm on your roster. Heath and Nor going to be a great pitching duo. You do not have to worry about that one bit. They're going to get you wins all the time. Both of them are very good hitters at the plate, especially Norp, who will be looking to replicate his 2021 performance in 2022. So, now that that's done, I'm going to go to awards. Rookie of the year, going to go to Jordan Robles. I think it's obvious that Robles wins it. Manager of the year, I think it's it's, it's kind of a free award. It's Tommy Coughlin. There's really no other answer. Now, I don't really like Tommy Coughlin's in-game managing as... Kyle mentioned on the podcast that he gets a lot of hate for. I would love to give this to Dan, but I think this probably just goes to Tom because, you know, he drafted Jordan Robles, so kind of gets that credit and traded for Ben Wilson. It's going to be Tommy's award to lose. Nobody else is really going to get it from him because Robles is basically guaranteed to be good. And then Gold Glove. Everyone talks about Jimmy Norb's defense, but I want to talk about Jonah Heath's defense. Now, Michael Shima was probably a bit of a better defender than Jonah Heath. You know, they might sub out Michael Shima sometimes times to try to play Trey Flood or maybe even try out Casey Bennett more. So I think Jonah Heath is going to be in the lineup every game. He's going to be fielding a lot. So I think Jonah Heath is going to win that gold glove. Silver Slugger is between a lot of guys. I would say Sailor, Schultz, Robles, and Norp. This should really be called the Nick Sailor Award. I really want to give this to Norp and Robles, but I'm giving it to Nick Sailor. And then for MVP, I am going with Nick Sailor. I didn't have him winning Silver Slugger. I could see Kyle Schultz winning it based on my playoff predictions, which, you know, you'll see later. And I could see Norp, I could see Crash, I could see Robles, I could see Drew, I could even see Cheatham. But I'm going to go with Sailor because I think that at this point he's the best player on the Wildcats. And I think he's probably the second best player in the league. Cy Young was very close for me between a couple of guys, which was Daniel Schultz, Ryan Crash, Kyle Schultz, and Jimmy Norp. I'm going to go with Dan Schultz. I'm, I'm feeling the Dan Schultz hype train. So he was so good at the end of last season, and I think he will carry that into this year. I know he came and gave up a lot of walks in spring training, but I'd rather see a guy shake off the rust, give up some walks in spring training, than come out and give up home runs in spring training. That's just my opinion. Now in the season, my opinion might change a little bit on that, but in spring training, your goal is to get the rust off, and I think Dan did that in spring training. And then for the most clutch award, that's going to go to Nick Saylor. And I think you guys probably already know who I'm picking for my world for my world series now. So for the playoffs in the ALDS, you have the Coastal Cobras going up against the Pacific Predators. I can't wait to see this series hopefully unfold in the ALDS, but something just tells me that the Cobras win it in three games. I really want to pick the Predators here, but I just feel like the Cobras 
Cobra is win it. It's going to be very close. But I think Andy comes up huge with a home run. Cobras barely take that. And then the NLDS, the Mallards, and the Eagles. I think this time Dan gets the better of Robles and I think gets the W there in three games. The ALCS, I feel like the Cats will beat the Cobras in two games, sweep them. It was kind of bold of me to pick the Cobras to win that playoff series, but this time the Wildcats absolutely crush them and advance to the World Series. And then in the NLCS, you have the Eagles, the D-backs. Now, obviously I should be going with the Diamondbacks. Everyone knows that, but I don't want to be boring. I'm going with the Eagles. Yes, I said I'm going with the Eagles. Daniel Schultz will clutch up in this game. Dallas Allen will also clutch up in this game, and even maybe land in your guidance. Those three are going to make a big difference in this game. Blade hopefully will be back by then. I don't know if he will be. If he's back, then he will make a big difference. So the Eagles, I think they move on to the World Series. And this is a World Series that I think a lot of us want to see. The Eagles and the Wildcats. This was the first World Series. The two original teams. Dan Schultz, Kyle Schultz, brothers. This is a World Series that we all want to see. At the end of the day, as you guys suspect, I think Nick Saylor hits a walk-off home run against Daniel Schultz to win the World Series in four games. Thank you guys for watching, and if you did enjoy, make sure you guys hit that like button and subscribe for a lot more MLW content. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.